And welcome to Descalatiata Overtime Edition. Special edition. We're doing a little bit of AV hacking here. I do the electronics hacking, and Mr. Lady Ada, who's behind the camera, is doing AV hacking. Uh, we also have Baby Ada uh, in the background. Uh, maybe we'll have some squeaks for us. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to show just a quick. Well, first of all, we're going to try out a couple uh, overhead things and computer yeah. things. So let's go to the computer. Let's see how that goes. Okay, cool. Um, so um, Pico DVI is this neat um module that is written by the raspberry pi team that takes advantage of the pio peripherals to generate dvi output um dvi output is the predecessor of hdmi um hdmi requires a licensing fee dvi does not and so this is dvi also doesn't support audio um so uh, pico dvi is the library uh phil b our resident uh, c code hacker and uh, pixel pusher uh, extraordinaire um kind of forked this and turned it into an Arduino library so that we can um, write code that uses DVI output from within Arduino, take advantage of all the libraries uh, and accessories and tutorials that we already have. Um, so he did that, which is awesome. And um, we have in the Adafruit shop, if you wanna do this DVI hacking, a little DVI breakout board, um, which just you know breaks out um, the, uh, three data uh, differential pairs, TX0, 1, and 2, and they're differential, so it's plus and minus, and then the clock. And then over here is the EEPROM for sync. Um, the way that you can identify a monitor is there's a little I2C EEPROM that hangs off of, there's two pins, and we'll show you uh, I2C, uh, SDA, and SCL, and a five volt line. And on the monitor side, not this, this is the sourcing side. So the syncing side has an EEPROM, which you can read and tells you what the resolution's available. Um, this is, you know, I'll get pulled from like VGA monitors had this. Um, and it's called an EDID. And I've told you like lost hours of my life to EDID hacking because it was designed before like JSON or XML. And so it's like in this weird packed format. Um, and it's very hard to manage. Um, anyways, and so this is like a little demo video just showing you know, you've got your uh, RP2040 Pico and it's wired up to that DVI and even on a breadboard, which like this shouldn't work, but um, the magic of short differential signal lines uh, and plenty of grounds in between, um, you can have, you know, I think this is 720p uh, color output of um, Eben's head and uh, Raspberry Pi logos bouncing around. But, you know, we love Eben's head, but what if we could have any graphical output? So that's what we're, we're trying to work on. Um, and so we've also uh, carried, for people who want to do hacking on this, if you don't want to just do wiring up like that and you're okay with using a Pico um, itself, we've got the uh, Pimeroni DV and VGA boards. And this has, like, everything is pre-wired and ready to go so you can start hacking. Um, but we want to make something that's really all-in-one. And I'm a little biased here because I actually like designing things for myself. I need an HDMI-compatible video generator to test um, our DVI slash HDMI monitors. Um, I need to have something that displays a gradient and checks that the EDID is programmed. Um, we've had a lot of boards that go out without the EDID programmed. And um, as uh, I posted a message on, on Tremel Hudson's most recent project, Linux machines cache the EDID. And so it's very, very hard to debug on Linux because it's doing you a favor. It's like, oh, you know, the EDID is this, you know, it's the same monitor, um, the EDID is the same. I don't want to read that whole two kilobytes over I squared C. Um, Windows doesn't. Windows actually reads it properly every single time. So very unfortunate for Linux and any developer who is using a Raspberry Pi or Linux to um, decode and debug EDIDs. Um, but uh, one of the first boards that I wanted to do with um, the the feather bones is a DVI output. So let's go to, well, this is, are you seeing this squished or is that just me? Sorry. Oh, it's not squished. It's just this monitor. Okay. Just yeah, sure. you're on a different resolution. No. Like viewer. We're, in AV. We're learning yeah. all about it. Okay, so let's go to the overhead. Okay, this is our new, pixels. new Almo overhead. Zoom in, zoom out. Uh, we will. <laughs> we'll zoom in. So this is the original Feather RP2040. We, we still sell this, a, a slight modification of this. Um, has has SWD pads in the center if you want to uh, use SWD, although um, nowadays people are using the, the Pico Pro. So we might tweak the design to use the three pin um, SWD debug. Um, and uh, you got the RP2040, flash memory, boot pin, all that good stuff. 
And then when we wanted to, we want to do more with this because the SAMD21 chip is, we're getting some, but I'm, I'm like the romance is over um, with SAMD. Um, you know, best friendship with SAMD has ended. RP2040 is new best friend. So redesigning all of our SAMD Feather M0 series to use the RP2040, which is basically the same price, but it's so much more capable, a ton more RAM, and of course is better for CircuitPython and MicroPython support. It has great Arduino support too. Um, so the first experiment was just like, okay, let's make this RP2040 Scorpio. And you can see, like, we basically have very, you know, the left side is kind of similar, but we squished a lot of stuff over and we got rid of this and then we pulled this back. Um, and then this flash chip instead of SOIC, we're using Exxon. Um, and then it gave us just an, enough space here that we could add in the level shifters and STEM QT port and this two by eight header that we use for the NeoPixel output on the Scorpio. But that wasn't even enough. We wanted even more space. And so on some Desk of Lady Adas, we did show how we squished this even more by using 0402s, by using um, smaller packaged um, di you know, diodes, resistors, capacitors, and um, I think even the, not the regulator, but uh, a transistor, we, we changed footprints. And also moved to a 7.7 rule, uh, 11 mil drills, but still keeping it two layer. Uh, so it's low cost. And so um, let's go back to the computer. We're practicing, moving back and forth. Um, the bones file, which is not published because again, it's it's not tested. This is actually the first board I'm doing with the bones file. Um, I'll open up the bones, 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 loading the bones. Um, so this is that bones file. So I took everything in the feather and just like squished it to heck all the way to the left, which leaves a huge space. And this is, you know, really taking advantage of, you can see much smaller drills, tighter packing, 0402 components. You know, I put some parts here. I changed this sod uh, 123 to sod 323. Um, you know, just using small, 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 small everything. NeoPixel is small too. But uh, what I do like is that these pin numbers are the proper GPIO pin numbers. And I have eight GPIO in a row that are available. And this is really important because PIO needs to have contiguous pins. Um, so for example, DVI use, uses eight GPIO. You really kind of want them in a row. Um, you also get better uh, signals as well. So, oh wait, let's go back to the bones. Bones. Uh, and so you see this spot here makes it so I can it's like, I want, you know, like MIDI output, like, you know, I could fit a MIDI jack here. It would be kind of weird, but like, why not? Um, this is a, you know, USB host could fit over here. Um, micro SD, small version, micro SD, larger version, um, DVI, which is what I was just showing you, um, you know, uh, this is iSpy connector maybe like a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi module, LoRa, uh, DWM, um, RS-232, which would kind of stick out the ends because the, the ones that are through hole mount are enormous and, and would be way bigger. Um, so this is, uh, you know, again, it's just experimentation with um, this bones file. So the first one I wanted to do was DVI. So you can see this is the DVI connector um inline resistors and then i've got this is this over here is a stem qt port and um let's see so this is what it looks like so there's inline 220 ohm resistors there's a hot plug detect um on the client side the sync side when the monitor's plugged in this gets pulled up this hot plug gets pulled to this five volt line which is connected to v high which is either um the five volt from usb or like the battery voltage which is like three and a half four volts um you know it's a little naughty to do that you should have it be a proper five volts but we're being naughty and uh you know it's we're already overclocking this chip to like 250 megahertz so this is not within spec anyways um the hot plug detect is just a, a divider to get down to three volts um all these ios and you can see them here in order and then um, the I squared C, don't forget, because we're providing five volts here, 
the um, I squared C lines are five volt logic level, possibly. So I have a little shifter here that will bring it from that high voltage down to three volts using the thoughts, the, the standard like systemic UT level shifter. And then, but you still have all the stuff we love about um, Feather RP2040s, a bazillion capacitors for all the, you know, three of 1.8 volt logic, uh, power input and filtering, um, reset button, USB boot button, um, sorry, the, yeah, the bootload button, and this button is also a user button. You can use this as input. It's connected to one of the GPIOs, so you can use it as an input. Um, light poly battery charging and a little NeoPixel. And then, um, you know, you know the, the detect pin, because we don't have a separate GPIO, I just brought the detect pin out because I feel like that's the most useful. And then for like ultra hacking, there's also the CEC and utility. These are used for like different, like I think like Ethernet over HDMI. It seemed like you could use this to trigger which one it is or something. I don't know. But, you know, I figured I'll break it out for like advanced hackers. Anyways, um, so I just wanted to show this off, um, this feather, which will be great for generating DVI signals. And you still have all these GPIOs left over for whatever you wish. You know, you can connect any other accessories um and i hope to you know, we definitely have arduino support for the dvi output and there's c support using pico sdk and hopefully as well we'll get um, maybe some sort of circuit python support that's okay. that's at my desk let's go to the overhead and um you zoom want... in oh yeah yeah zoom in let's just see what happens that's kind of nice get used to this let's get let's look at this very small yeah resistor pack and then if you could then, um yeah, move the uh you know the, the camera physically and see how close you can get or how far you can get where it still stays in focus okay so yeah we start now see what happens because there's probably like what's the what's the closest you can get and still have it focused so you probably have to back it up yeah that's physically. too close yeah so back it up physically a little bit and then that's pretty good see yeah if, i mean you can actually yeah, back see no 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 this is it this is that's big, pretty good you can actually perfect. see yeah look at that hold on oh is it not it looks like it's in focus maybe yeah i think you can back it up a little bit more yeah it's kind of struggling yeah i'm going to be hooking up the microscope soon okay okay this is so, so now you back see, you can see the marking yeah so now back back it out back 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 back, 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 back. back. yeah and i'll probably be slightly sharper this time anyways keep back in back back, 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 back. And then yeah, you can see those nice solder joints. Yeah, good work. And then okay. um, on the right hand side, there's a little menu. Pop that out and let's um, uh, draw something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just draw something. So okay, so this is my uh, whoops. This is the uh, 74. Yeah. LVC. <laughs> This is not a great interface. Well, no, I can get you a pen because I think we can use a pen. Oh, yeah, we can use a capacitive touch pen. Yeah. All right, then go off to the side. Is there a clear or anything? Does it clear it or do you have to erase it? Okay. Um, I don't know what this means. What is that? I think that's oh, erase. Oh, erase all. Oh, that was erase and all. This is pen pencil. Oh, this is a little bit better. That's black. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe but I can color. change. Okay, cool. I can change the color to be like, so this is like. All right. So this is good practice for you repeat. because tomorrow on Ask an Engineer, Maybe we'll use the uh, annotation feature. I kind of like the annotation, you know, if I, yeah. I want to show like what everything is. But yeah, you definitely. Yeah, we used to use a little whiteboard. You just need to have. Um, you definitely want to have a. Uh... We got yeah, I mean, I can I can remove this, and then it's just a whiteboard. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah, so that I can. Yeah. Poop. You only... it. Yeah. And then what's the uh, on the right on the left hand side? Your left. Is oh, that's the same thing. Same thing. Okay, got it. Okay, cool. And then I think you can move when get, get to the little hand, move the little, get to the hand. I think you can move the annotation around. You can pick it up and move it. Maybe. I don't, I don't know what the hand is then. What's the hand do? Maybe like raise hand or something. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it would move something around. I should probably read the book. Do not know. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, this has different. Yeah, thicknesses. thicknesses. Markers. Yeah. Markers translucent, I think. By yeah, it is. Yeah, it so is. that's the thing. It's a highlight, whereas the pen is um, yeah. opaque. So they both have reasons. But yeah, I think a capacitive 
pen would be good. All right. But so I like it. It's nice. Okay. So we'll, do, we'll get that going on. Okay, cool. And this, for people who are wondering, Boom. this is the Elmo Visual Presenter yeah. MA1. Yep. Maybe I can have it look at itself. Dun, dun. Get self-aware. Whoa. Yeah, there's a USB port in the front, and we're going to have a little light, and we're going to do some stuff with some Adafruit hardware. Yeah, so we're going to try this out. Autofocus, zoom in and out, home, yeah. take a photo, freeze frame, power, Yeah. SD, it, USB. This is for storing stuff on the USB key. Yeah, it does other stuff. And then we also have, a, we have our microscope we're going to hook up. So we're just trying to up our game. Yeah. So you all have beautiful pixels. Whoa, it's another dimension. OK. That's uh, space. <laughs> okay. That's our overtime edition. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.